Amen. Can we say amen for our pastor? Hasn't God given us good leadership? Come on, let's thank God for Bishop and Ruth Sharona. Come on, let's put our hands again together. I said for good leadership. Come on. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We thank God for Daniel and Matthew and for all of the saints of God. Isn't God wonderful? Uh, we had a wonderful time, Pastor. We had a wonderful time with the singles. Ah, wonderful time. And you have such good leadership over the singles. And we thank God for Pastor Hadley. Can we say amen? I'm going to ask you if you do me one favor and reach out and take your sister and brother by the hand. Good worship. Good worship. The presence of the Lord. We're just going to ask you if you pray with us. We have a word from the Lord and we just wanted to go down in good ground. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Lord, prophetically, you've been singing to us for weeks and weeks. No limits. No boundaries. I see increase all around me. Stretch forth. Break forth. Release me. Enlarge my territory. Father, we thank you for who you are and whose we are. Thank you for this pastor. Thank you for this pastorate as they couple together to forge an accomplishment in this kingdom. Thank you for every leader in this house. Thank you for every believer. The saints of the most high God. We thank you. For in Zion there shall be deliverance. In Zion, there shall be, there shall be holiness. And Jacob shall come forth and possess his possessions. Father, we thank you for the vision that you've handed. And caused here on the earth that we should be in agreement with what you desire to do. Oh, gracious God. Oh, gracious God. Yes, Lord. Oh, gracious God. We thank you for land. We thank you for buildings. Oh, gracious God. We thank you for real estate. We thank you for debt liberation. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for studios. Thank you, Didi Osi Manayata. Thank you for world increase. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for the gospel that it shall touch nations from this place. Thank you, Didi Beshita. Thank you for ministry increase. Thank you for pastors coming in, sons and daughters all over this globe. Thank you, Didi Bashito. Thank you for your kindness and your mercy. Thank you for great grace and great favor on this house. Thank you for everyone that puts their hands to the plow and refuses relentlessly to look back. Oh God, we command the blessing. We command the blessing on those that would say, add me to the vision. Add me to the labor. Father, we thank you. For your presence greatly upon this house and this great people. Thank you for this great fast. Thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the blessing. In Jesus name. And the people of God said amen. 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 I'm going to ask you before you sit down. Before you sit. If we just embrace somebody and just command the blessing, say, I command the blessing of your increase right now. Oh,
You got to do it one more time. Oh, oh. the blessing on one more person say I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus oh. mm. bless me bless me bless me bless me bless me Can you just say, say, oh, 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 put your right hand down, oh, 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 one more time, say, oh, 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 one more time, say, going to ask you if you will if you'll go with us to the saint called Luke in chapter number 19 Your presence. Oh, oh, oh. oh God, we thank you. Isn't he a wonderful saint? In, in, in this chapter, the Lord has asked us to share something with those that are willing to follow him there. Ask somebody, are you a disciple? Ask them, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? But wait on their response. Say, you ain't said nothing to me yet. <laughs> Ask them, are you a disciple? And are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? And stay there and see the words come out their mouth. Come on, the disciples, come on, put your hands together. Let's give God praise. Ah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is only for discipleship. And that's the reason why they want to, you know, we don't want to put pearls in the wrong places. This is only for discipleship. Okay? Come on now, let's read. Come on, shall we? Let's go with verse number 11. Verse 11, and let's begin reading together. And it says what? Now, I know we have all different kinds of translations, but read yours, okay? In verse 11, it says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately come, say immediately come. Immediately. Verse number 12, He said unto them, Therefore, a certain noble went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Verse 13. And he called his ten servants, say servants, servants. and delivered to them ten pounds and said unto them, 
occupy till I come. Say occupy till I come. Say occupy. Occupy till I come. Verse 14, but his citizens hated him. Say the citizens hated him. And the servants loved him. Okay. And sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Verse 15. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money. Say money. money. Didn't say talent. Say money. money. Didn't say gifts. Say money. money. He gave them money. All right money and he asked them each one of them what they had done with this man's money amen and it came to pass that uh, he said to the first one in verse 16 what have you done with the gain of trading so here in verse 6 it says then the first came and said Lord I took your pound and I gained 10 pounds. How many of you see that last E clause in verse 15? He said to them, Have you gained anything by trading? What did you invest and what did you increase by investing my talent? My gift? What did you take my money? Where did you invest my money? And what did you gain from the investment? Is that right there in your Bible? Does it say trading? Does it say trading in your Bible? Say, okay. Verse 16, he said, I took the money and I invested it and I gained 10 pounds. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 17 in your Bible, and he says, and he said unto him, well, Thou art a good servant. Because thou hast fa been faithful in a very little, have the authority over ten cities. And they sang to the second, he said, Lord, thy pound I have gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over how many cities? And then he said to another one saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept, laid it up in a napkin, for I feared thee, because thou art austere. You're an austere man, thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest thou what thou didst not sow. 22. And he said unto him, Out, out of thine own mouth will I judge you. You are a wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man taking up where I lay not down and reaping where I do not sow. Wherefore then gavest thou not my money unto the bank? Does that say bank? Yeah. All right. And you come to me empty handed when you could have required at least my money to have usury could have at least had interest on my money. Verse 24, and he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound that I gave him and give to him who has increased my money through investments, the one with the 10 pounds. But now look, and they said unto him in 25, Lord, he already has 10 pounds. I want you to read this. Come on, disciples. Verse 26. For I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given. Now, you, do you have anything? Do you have? To him it shall be given. But what does it say? Uh-huh. From him that hath not even that which he hath shall be what? Verse 27. But those mine enemies 
which would not have me reign over them, bring hither, slay them in front of me. I want you to go to Obadiah. Go to chapter number one, verse 17. Come on, take a visit. You haven't seen him in a while. Visit with Obadiah. If you're anywhere near Joel and Amos, you're in the right spot. Obadiah, chapter number one, verse 17. Take a deep breath, disciples. God's got something good for us. Amen. Verse 17 and read. It's talking about the church. It's talking about Zion. All right? Read and it says what? But upon Mount Zion shall be what? Deliverance. And there shall be what? Holiness. And the house of Jacob shall do what? Possess their possessions. Now, let's talk about the church again. Verse 17, it says what? If you're there, say, I am there. I am there. Come on, read. It says, but upon Mount there shall be what and there shall be and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession deliverance holiness and possessions if you've got deliverance and holiness possessions not possessions without holiness and deliverance the church is different from any other entity because where there's deliverance and holiness there is possessions Holiness and deliverance and possessions. Not possessions and deliverance and no holiness. Holiness, deliverance, and possessions. Not possessions first. Deliverance, holiness, possessions. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Holiness. And touch not the unclean thing. Then. Possessions. Amen? You have it? All right. I want you to look at somebody and tell them, listen, take care of your business. Take care of your business. God bless you, pastor. It's an honor. Come on, look at them again and say, take care of your business. Mm -hmm. Tell them, stop slacking. Take care of your business. Take care of your business. Business. Take care of your business. Take care of your business. All right? Look at somebody say, no, no, no. You've been kind of laying in the cut. Take a, t take a minute. Because you know you sit by them all, all the time. So you know them. So you, you know you've been. Take care of your business. Take care. They ain't going to do nothing to you. Go on, look at they ain't going to do a thing. You talk to them all the time. Look at them and say, don't try that. You know I'm talking to you. Hey, 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 hey. Go on, touch them say, hey, look at me. Take care of your business. See, some of you scared of them. They won't even turn your way and say, no, baby, no, no. Slow this train down. Take care of your business. Come on, put your hands together. You're going to be all right in a minute. Yes, the Holy Ghost is all up in your stuff. Come on, look at them and say, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about already. I could preach this to myself. I had a dream about 4 o'clock this morning. I shared it with Pastor about 4 a.m. this morning. If not a little bit earlier when I started to, to write, it was around about 5. So it was, I know I was up a while. So I had one of them days, you know, when the... The Holy Spirit wakes you up and you just say, hello. <laughs> hello, how are you? And you know that he has something to say because, you know, he's just that way. And the, the business was important and the business was you. Look at somebody and say, I'm just that important to my father. <laughs> it's extremely important. And I want you to be able to get this tape, get the tape this morning so that you can put them together, will you? Because I'm going to be very obedient and subject to this house, okay? And when time comes, whether I'm finished or not, I'm stopping. Because I'm submit to and subject to authority, amen? Now, listen. I saw something I'd never seen before. 
And most of us know, as we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that sometimes the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you so that you can understand more plainly what you're operating in. Amen? And the Lord showed me uh, a, a form, a spirit, uh, that almost had to look like an octopus. It had tentacles, long tentacles, and it, it was touching and laying hands on. It, it was like different churches. You see what I'm saying? It had a tentacle here and a tentacle there and a tentacle here and a tentacle there. It was just touching and it was back, this big, this big something, you know, that, you know, I, I, can't, I can't give you the form because I don't, I don't know the form. That's why I said it's, it's like an octopus, but it was, it was just touching things touching and had its hand, its tentacle on it. And as it was touching it, I said, God, well, what is that? What is that? The Holy Spirit whispered to me, he says, this is the spirit of life. I said, you mean the spirit against life, don't you? Aren't we something thinking we can correct God like he don't know? He said, no. He calls himself the spirit of life. Then he went on to share with me his bailiwick. All of the things that he does. He prophesies. He sings. He gives love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness. He gives all of these things. He does signs and wonders and miracles. And, uh, and he's very religious. He's a teacher. Things of this nature, just touching, just touching. And you see all these, these churches, these church communities. And I said, but that's, that can't be life, your life. He said, he mimics. He mimics everything I am and everything I do. It's so close to looking like the church, but it is not the church. And if you could see it, just places just packed with, with people. They were not empty communities. They were full communities. I said, well, Lord, I, I don't understand. So then the Holy Spirit, as you know, sometimes in prayer, he'll unction you how to pray. He said, rebuke him. And then he gave me all the words to say. You know how he'll put words in your spirit. Rebuke him. I rebuke his false love, false peace, false joy, false healing, his false religious, his false songs, his false doctrine, false teaching, false prophetic. I rebuke his false apostolicity. I rebuke his false movement, his false plots, his schemes, his hands, his, and, and just going down, you know how, and the more I rebuked him, I could see the tentacles lifting and moving back, moving back. The falseness. You must understand that in the 21st century church, there is no church except it is a church with holiness. Holiness is the ethic and the foundation of God's church. You can have a wonderful church and a wonderful group of people, but if there is no holiness, it is not the church of the living God. It's a mimic, but it's not a church. The church is a church of deliverance. So if people shy away from coming out of darkness and they are satisfied sitting in their darkness, there is a, an acute possibility that you are not in the glorious church triumphant. You're in a community, but it is not the blood washed, the redeemed body, the delivering power of the awesome Holy God. Because his church, Mount Zion, shall be a church of deliverance, shall be a church of holiness, and Jacob shall possess his possessions. We have been given a covenant 
And in our covenant, it does not say that we are poor and beggary and that we are slothful and that we are uh, 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 offshore incidents where we have no substance. Our covenant says we possess. And we will possess our possessions. I know that Constantine has messed some things up years ago and they try to trickle that, that gook down to the present day church that we ought to take vows of poverty where you go on by yourself. But in this Bible, he said we shall possess our possessions and you'll not make me ashamed of carrying the gospel in his wholeness. Sisters and brothers, the Lord has sent me to tell you, take care of your business. Take care of your business. Here, they, they, they're saying, Master, you know, when, when, when are you going to take over? And when are you going to uh, uh, take care of Jerusalem? And when are you going to sit on the throne and, and run out all of the Roman, all of the Roman occupation? We are tired of going by their rules and their edicts and their doing their things. When are you going to sit on the throne and take over? He says, wait, 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 wait now. Wait, wait. Wait, you kind of got everything ahead of itself. Hold, hold a minute. Now, Jesus had not yet died. There was no Calvary yet. There was no death, burial, and resurrection yet. Sometimes we have a tendency to want to rush things before things that are already set to take place take place. Jesus says, no, 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 no. This is what you should be focusing on because God is handling his business. So this is what your business is. Occupy. Occupy until you are no longer in control, in the, where the system is in control of you. Through the midst of this fasting this month, the Lord spoke to me and said, live beyond the system. I want you to whisper to your neighbor say, live beyond the system. We are in this world, but we are not of it. We are in the world, but we are not of it. We are in the world, but we are not of it. We cannot come subject to the control of this system. As long as Pharaoh can dictate how much you make, you are a servant to the system. As long as you are satisfied with $12 or $5 or $29 an hour, Pharaoh can tell you how far you can go and when you need to come. As long as they can clock you, you need to hear be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for this $5.95. And you're going to work from 9 to 12 midnight for this $5 a week. As long as you are subject to the system, the system tries to control the vision. And if the vision of God is controlled, then the church community is controlled. Your homes are controlled. Your children's education are controlled. Everything is controlled because the system says you will live and you will breathe and you will eat at my table and you will serve me and you will do what I tell you, come when I tell you, leave when I tell you. God said live beyond the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on disciples. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no age on this message. No, whether you nine or 199, God is saying to us as disciples, touch disciples, say, suck it up. Come on now, suck it up. Let's live beyond the system. As long as we're renting from them, as long as we don't own the deed, as long as we don't have the note, as long as we don't hold the paper, we are still in the system. 
Get out as fast as you can and become owners. Not of some of your stuff, but all of your stuff. Why? Not so that we can put our thumbs in our chest, but God needs a liberated, functional, increased, gloriously abundant people. Oh yes, it's time to invest. You have bought enough clothes and enough shoes. We can't keep eating food, 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 and more food. Help me, Jesus. We have to take that and invest it because the kingdom has to have our investment and we must be about the business of the kingdom. Somebody help. Come on, help the person next to you say, amen. Amen. Now you say, well, well, well I, I don't have enough money to just live, much less invest. You can't afford not to as a disciple to invest because this is the book. He said, you are to occupy till I come. He said, you are to keep investing until I come. What did they give him? He gave him a pound. He gave him $17. Everybody in this room got $17. $17. But you have to know in that, that day, that was 17 days of work. Because they made a penny a day. He gave him two weeks salary. Somebody say two weeks. You could take two weeks of your salary and say, what do I make in a month? Well, I could work it out where I can start trying to learn to invest two weeks of my money. I could work my stuff now. Well, I make um, $500 a week, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start pinching off here, pinch and pinch and pinch, till I get that first 500. And I'm gonna pinch, 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 till I get that second 500. And then I'm investing. I'm investing. He gave them two weeks of salary and said, invest this and keep investing it until I come. And when you invest, this is nothing more but showing God that he can trust you. He can trust you with kingdom business. Because when you start investing and money starts growing, you take on a different attitude. You take on a horrible attitude when you broke. Sometimes we don't even know you're saved. <laughs> oh, come on now. You know when you broke, you're not nice. You're not nice at all. You want to go shopping for what? <laughs> you want to go out to eat? <clears throat> I ain't got no money. Well, I'll, t I'll take you. I don't want you to pay for my lunch. I want my own money. You know how you are when, 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 when money gets funny? You start changing. Hey, praise the Lord, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> praise him. You know how you change. You know, there's something about poverty that, that doesn't agree with us. There's something about being broke busted and disgusted that doesn't agree with us. Praise agrees with us. Hilarium agrees with us. Joy agrees with us. But poverty we can't stand it. We hate it. Don't put it nowhere near me. It looks like negativism. Listen. To follow this word you're going to have to get rid of your negative speech and everybody that's negative around you. Because poverty loves negativism. It loves to hear people say, well, I just can't afford it. I can't afford to do what they do. Poverty loves hearing you say that because you have what you say. Mark chapter 11 said, you can have whatever you say. Jesus said, don't marvel at this, son, that the tree was so easily withered. When I said to the tree, be cursed because you refuse to be fruitful. God curses non-fruitful things. How long you been saved? 
How long you been speaking in tongues and shouting and dancing? And how long has it been since you really allowed God to use you to be a vehicle and a vessel of prosperity? Oh, are you just still running around talking about, oh, I can't, I can't. What are you talking about? They're asking, oh well, my God, they said a thousand dollars. How are we going to give a thousand dollars? How? No, no, baby, you having what you speak. Because if you say I can't, then you have a can't mentality and you're bringing up every briar and every wall and every stone against you. When are you going to believe what God says you are? When are you going to really be a disciple for real and say whatever God says I am, I am. And ain't a devil in the hell can stop me. Poverty, get out of my house. Oprah Winfrey was very candid in opening up somebody's personal life one time she asked Dr. Maya Angelou and said listen we were over at the party at your house and you put this woman out and, that's, and the people in the audience started to laugh she said well you know how she looks I'm very serious about that I said, well, why did you put her out of the party? We all sitting down to dinner. You went to the door, got her purse, got her gloves, gave them to her and said, get out. <laughs> so y'all think that's rude, don't you? I think she did right. She told the woman, you're negative. Your spirit is a negative spirit. Every time I talk to you, you have nothing good to say. You don't even have good things to say about yourself and people that are around you, about your family and children, and I dare not. I dare not have that negative spirit in my drapes, in my carpet, in my clothes, coming into my house. See, you hang around Christians that are negative, always naysayers, and you'll wonder why you're broke. But the spirit is in your clothes, it's in your mind, it's in your self conscious you gotta tell people if you're gonna walk with me you gonna say what God says you gonna do what God says do and I refuse to have anything negative around me say it on the Lord rebuke you this word is not predicated on our degrees it's predicated on our faith this word is not predicated upon our age or our the color or our sexual gender. This word is predicated upon faith alone. He says you can have what you say if you believe. If, if you believe when you pray and when you stand praying, forgive. That your heavenly father can forgive you. See, the only thing that topples our authority is our sin. We are an unbeatable people if we repent of our sins. Lamentations chapter number 5 verse 16, 18, and 21 says this. It says, the crown has fallen from our heads. Jeremiah is trying to figure out we're the church we're the glorious church triumphant why are we having financial difficulties why are we looking like the oscurgings of the earth why are we having a difficult time making it come on here Jehovah Jehovah reigns how do you get the name uh, Jireh and you don't have supply. How do you get the name Shalom? And we are in a wits for our life. How do you get the word M Kadesh? And we're struggling in our own flesh for righteousness sake. God is absolutely who he says he is. So if he is an absolute, then the problem must not be him. It's probably me Jeremiah said the crown has fallen it has fallen from our heads and the reason why it's fallen from our heads verse number 18 is we have said but I, I, I know the way back I know where we fell off but how do we get back many of you know how you fell off you know how you fell off and some of you will hold bitterness until hell freezes over 
and don't know you are cutting your wealth. You think God will give you whatever you ask and sin is blocking you. Your authority, your crown, your, your deism, your, your, uh, your, your proper order in God has fallen from your head. You have to understand, you got to get over it. You've been wounded. Praise God. We all have. The baby, that's what prayer meetings for, fasting for. In the house of God, they're counselors. You see what I'm saying? Be healed. And if there's nobody there to heal you, physician, heal yourself. But come on through this thing. Come on through this. Forgive them. Yeah, they didn't know what they were doing. You saw Jesus said the same thing. Oh, look, look at them. Father, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. You know people don't know what they're doing and some of them are premeditated. They knew exactly what they were going to do. They woke up that morning to hurt you. But let's get over that. How bad do you want what God has called us to in this end time 21st century church? How bad do you want to see God work through you as never before? Because I'm telling you the economy shift is about to take place. And all that the sinners have been working and stacking up and, and piling up is about to be shifted to the 21st century church. See, you know what? We want the wealth, but do you want the stuff to position you for it? For Zion shall be a church of holiness. Zion is a church of deliverance. Zion shall possess her possessions. Now listen, listen, fix you. Nobody knows you like you. Nobody knows you like you. Fix you because it's about to take place. It's about to happen. He says in 21, he says, turn us. Turn us to yourself. Uh, we, 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 we fail. We, we're off. We've stepped off the bright path, but we repent. We're sorry. Please return us. Turn us to yourself, O oh Lord. We, we slacked off a prayer meeting. First God say we were praying all the time. We were there. We never missed Bible class. My God, sacrilegious for me to miss Bible class. No, I don't want your job because you won't give me Tuesday off. We wouldn't let anybody get between us and that book because that book was life for us. No, I don't work nobody's Sundays. We was arrogant with it. So, well, all right, we give you Sunday off. Well, are you a preacher? No, I, 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 I just came. I came. I got to go to church. I got I to gotta go to church. I got to be at church on Sunday. I got to be at church on Tuesday. If you can give me them two days off, I work for you. Now we work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, trying to find two jobs on Saturday, and Sunday all over again. We have gotten off. We've gotten off, and now money is more important. I'm not talking about the money as much as I'm talking about wealth. Wealth. But the wealth is balanced wealth. It comes with deliverance. It comes with holiness. And then we possess our possessions. It comes with deliverance. It comes with holiness. And we possess our possessions. We can't keep being stingy and want the wealth of God. No, 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 no. How? How? Stinginess is not in any of the gifts of God. There's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance. I, I, I don't see stingy on there. I don't see that. See that on there. Well, I'm being frugal. That is not frugal. You are stingy. You are a tight wad. You have a bad eye. The Bible calls it a bad eye. Jesus says, when you have a bad eye, or he calls it, when you are stingy, he said it's hard for you to even move with your bags through the eye of a needle. You're trying to carry everything with you, giving nothing away. You have to know the liberal soul towards God shall be made fat. You've been a disciple how long? What does your financial record look like to the nobleman of the house? 
Huh? When he looks at it, he says, what did you do with my money? Well, I ate. Got me a couple nice things to wear. Got a nice house. I think I'm pretty, pretty set. That's good naturally. Now, tell me spiritually, what have you sold for your future? One saint told me, he said, I ain't never gave God more than $20. Now, this is a grown, a grown, a grown individual. I said, baby, how long you been saved? All my, my, my life, I grew up in this. But I can't see giving God anything past $20. I said, oh, so that's it. I've only been passing you three years. But that's why you can't keep a job. That's why you can't keep a car. Huh? Oh, that's the... Oh, that's the issue. Mm. That's why they keep firing you. Because mm -hmm. you're a thief. You're a robber. No, 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 no. That's not God's way. This word is for us. The disciples. Reach over and tell somebody, you still a disciple? You, you, you still a disciple? You still, you still in the family? Uh-huh. You breathing? Ah, okay. All right. Then he says, if you show us and return us to the old way, you know, with that old passion we had for the church. We didn't come into church to see who was what. We didn't care. We just glad we saved. Yeah. And then people say, well, you, you want to watch the baby go on now. I got to get my praise on. When they going to start serving? Well, you're two hours early. Well, I'll just sit in the sanctuary and wait. We used to just sit and wait on people to come. And then if they didn't open the door, deacons didn't come and the trustees didn't come early enough, we sit outside and just sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For he, we had praise, pre-praise, and then we came on in here. And then when we came in church, they said, boy, that's a wild soul. No, we done praise and we done hit here before we got here. Come on, saints. <laughs> Fell off a little bit, you know. But we, can, we know the way back. The way back is, I'm so sorry, God, you're right. I have. I've fallen off, and I do need to be about my business because you want me to help with the victory of the kingdom here on earth. Then he turns around in Psalms 2, verses 6 through 8, and he says, ask me. Ask me for the heathen, and I will give him to you. He says, ask me. Ask me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, and I will give you the uttermost parts of the earth for your possessions. He said, ask me. How are you going to ask him if you don't have a prayer life? How are you going to ask him if you're allowing sin and old stuff to get between you and God? Forgive everybody. Get everything out the way. Don't let anything between you and God because it's all about holiness. Holiness and I have to be delivered. Deliver me, God. Deliver me from the pains of my past so I can be about what you need me to be about right now. Because I want to be victorious in this community. I want to be able to write my own million dollar check. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking to you about hype. I'm talking that God woke me up before I even got here. Said, preach this and then woke me up here and said, tell them this. Tell them this. Tell the disciples this for me. Be about their father's business. Be about the business of the kingdom. And live beyond this system. Ask me for the heathen and I'll give them to you as an inheritance. You ought to turn around and tell somebody, I can't wait till this is through because I'm going to ask him. I'm going to do everything I can. I want the wealth of the heathen transferred to the church. I want it transferred. Ezra chapter number 2 and verse 21 says when he was on his way to build up the walls of Zion when he was there to lay the foundation of the temple before he even crossed over look at the wisdom of the prophet he stayed on this side of the river and while he stayed on that side of the river he said no I commissioned myself to fast and pray because I wasn't going to go in my own natural flesh I wanted to find out a plan for me and for my children and for my substance there comes a time when you ought to be sick and tired of being just enough and never having overflow. I see it going down, mother. It's going down in the right spot, too. I want you to understand something. If you commission yourself to fast, God will give you a plan to bring your people out of poverty. He'll give you the outline and say, if you do this, then I will do that. 
Oh, I have seen him do it over and over. You can change your own bottom line if you follow the plan of God. He said tithing. He said offering. He said teruma. He said even the alms of the poor. Sisters and brothers, you have to understand, Israel gives five offerings. <laughs> Gives two tithe, a head tithe, and a second tithe. Here we are in the midst of the 21st century. We can't complain about his system because his stuff works. Look at somebody say, it works, baby. I just have to commit myself to doing it every day because it works. Israel said, I want a plan. Give me a plan. I don't want to fail. I want a, a, a plan. Give me the plan. Give me an outline. I'll fast and pray until you speak to me about what it is I need to do for my children, for my little ones, and, and, and for my substance. I, I need your protection. I need your blessing. How many of you saying to you, God, I need a blessing to come into my house for my children, for my family, and all about my substance. I need your help. Is there somebody out of me that says I want you, I, I want the blessing sisters and brothers he says also in Psalms 102 verses 13 through and 16 he says the time of your favor is come it says this thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion is there anybody in here that says God pour out your mercy on me I, I'm saying, Lord, mercy, mercy. Don't judge me for what you know, because I won't make it. I need your mercy. He will pour out his mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come. Verse 16, when the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayers of the destitute. And he will not despise when you pray to him. You can be in trouble. Your God is always listening. God is always caring. God is always willing. All he's asking to do is fix that. Fix that. Move that. Get, 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 get back in line. Take that, take Take, 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 take that out your heart. Um, I didn't dress you like that. I don't know if you've ever had those kind of mothers uh, that prepared you on Saturday night for Sunday morning. Uh, and baby, listen, they did that hair and tie that hair up so that when they got up on Sunday morning, what nothing dragging, nothing lagging, and nothing making them late. They cook, they clean, they iron our clothes, shined our shoes, made sure everything was all right, because when Sunday morning came, we go going to the house of God. Now forget your socks. Forget to have laid them out, and, and, and mother didn't have a chance to wash them where you're going without them, because this is the Lord's day, and I'm not getting in the way of my blessing. You've got to be that day Determined. You've got to be that focused. You've got to be that radical. You've got to be that relentless. God is sending you a word so that you can come from one station of life. He's getting ready to enter us into a new level. He's on the beach. He's asking you, do you have any fish? You say, I ain't got enough fish. All I got is for me and mine. God said, I've got more than that. If you just follow the plan you can cast your net on the right side of the boat and bring in a draught is there any disciple here in the house that says I need a net breaking boat shaking experience in the Lord shout hallelujah shout glory It's a new day. There's a new dawning here at the master's touch. Here we are at the master's table and I want to eat and get full. When I get up, I do want my visage to change. I want my shape to change. I don't know if you've ever overeaten. <laughs> you sneak up under there and unfasten that button. Take that in the back and click, click. <laughs> it says I've eaten. And I enjoyed myself. 
Huh? It changes you. It changes you just like hunger changes you. I don't know if you, people made you wait six hours and invited you to dinner at two and didn't feed you till six o'clock and you done waited all day. You done said, I'm not going to eat breakfast. I'm not going to eat lunch because I'm going to dinner. And you get to dinner and they say, well, the turkey is not ready. And our cornbread is not ready. And the dressing's not ready. I hate to go to dinner and they make you wait three hours because the stuff ain't ready. You should have invited me when it was ready. Because I brought my appetite with me when I came. Ah, somebody's hungry in this house. And we hungry for a change. And we hungry for some more victory. And we hungry for some more overturning glory. And we're hungry for the change of our life. And we are the head and not the tail. We are from above and not beneath. And we want every devil under our feet. Come on, let's get down to business. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. Sisters and brothers, I want you to know that he said we're to invest. I don't know what you've been doing with your money, but God is saying, I don't send them enough money. Well, they ought to be millionaires by now. Look at somebody said, don't get quiet now. <laughs> Pastor Mark ought to be doing, and Sister Ruth, Pastor Ruth ought to be doing what Moses did. Say, please, y'all don't give another offering. We got more than enough. We got the money for the land. We got the money for the buildings. We got the money for the schools, for the studios. We got the money to send missionaries overseas. We got all the money we ever need. I'm not talking to you about a dream or some phantoming of my thought. God has more than enough. He has distributed wealth among us. He has given you witty inventions and you have not moved on them. He's given you plans to make millions and billions, but you have not moved on them. But you have to understand somebody else moved on and you looked at your vision and you saw it on TV and you saw it wrapped up in a package. You said, God gave me the same idea. And now you're seeing them on eBay and everywhere. God will give a dream, but he won't give it just to one person. He'll give a dream and he'll scatter that dream all over because he knows that because we are flesh, some of us don't believe some of us won't receive some of us are slow moving some of us gonna sleep on it but some of us are afraid just like that young man I, 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 I know I don't want to mess up so I, I, I'm afraid sir, to mess up because that's a spirit of fear you got to know that fear will take you to hell Revelation chapter number 21 verse number 8 the fearful and the unbelieving shall also have their form and their body in the lake that burns with brimstone and fire sisters and brothers you got to understand he did not give you a spirit of fear but he gave you a spirit of and and a sound mind sisters and brothers let's work that mind let's work that peace let's work that joy let's work what we are instead of what the devil tries to get us to mimic it's a false church and a false disciple and a false believer that will not work the word go to that book put your hand on it and say God you said occupy and I want everything you tell me to do I want you to make it a thousand fold uh, that's Deuteronomy chapter number one uh, I want you to be uh, increased a thousand fold uh, a thousand fold uh, take that one dollar and put it down uh, and say a thousand fold uh, take that ten dollars and put it down and say a thousand folds uh, make me ten times better God has given you the ability to do it when there is birth does he send one sperm for one egg? No. One sperm for one egg? That's all we really needed though, isn't it? <laughs> but when he sends out a dream, <sighs> when
when he sends out a destiny. Shh. When you're talking about true life in Jesus Christ, a million to one swim towards the same goal. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. He told you, he gave you a witty invention, said, if you make this and you do that and the other, this will be this good, good seed for the, for the church. And you sit, 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 sit. Somebody else says, take the dream. Because you weren't the only one that got the dream. Uh huh. If God had to depend, really depend on us. <laughs> you know, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he'd, be still, he'd be still between the cross and the grave. <laughs> well, somebody come, come. Come on, y'all. Sisters and brothers, you have to see. He's saying, get down to business. Get down to business. Get down to business. He sends it out. Do you think Bill Gates was the only one that thought about computers? No. Absolutely not. When you start doing key punch in the 60s, somebody already had a thought. The dream was already in motion. You was doing key punch. Mother, these young folk don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> they don't know what we're saying. It's all right, children. <clears throat> key punch. Big old machines. Cards with a bunch of dots in it. Four train. They don't know what that is. They don't know nothing about that. You think that was the only one he sent to dream out? But he had the tenacious fortitude to go past struggles, barriers, things that would hinder, no money. Do you remember, do you ever read his story? You see how often he was broke? He was about to give it up. He was a month from giving up the whole idea. He was broke, busted, had nothing but a dream. He held on. Sometimes when you can't see how to get it done, just talk to God and hold on. But $24 billion later, and everybody in this downline, billionaires, can you ever imagine what he thinks now? If I had let go just two weeks earlier. Sometimes at your hardest struggle, you right at the breaking of day. When you know that God has given it to you, hold it. Living beyond this system. Do you think he's worried about a mortgage? You think? You think he's worried about insurance? You think he's worried about a car note? Does he have a card note? <laughs> Come on. Come on. God has given you the same ability. He's given you the same thing. Get down to business. Somebody, sometimes God will say, no, I done gave you so many things that's in your hands. And you keep trying to go another way, but you, 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 won't, you won't buckle down to what I'm giving you. So you say struggling. Walking around the same mountain over and over. I'm sorry, I ain't got no money. And all your wealth is right there. But you keep repeating it because you're having what you say. I ain't got, so you wipes that out. I ain't got, I ain't got, I can't afford it. You just knocking down crop after crop. Oh, I'm just so broke. I'm just so poor. I need somebody to give me something. Shh. You are creating your own atmosphere. Because he says, if you really believe you can have whatsoever you say. I've been sent here to light your soul a passion again. So that you would grab a hold to this vision. And you tell God, I want to write my own check. I don't want to put my money with their money. You know how sometimes you say, Saints, well, if there's three people on your road, 
You give a 10, they give five, seven, and we'll have it. No, no, no. I want my own wealth. I want my own wealth. I want my own wealth because you need me to be wealthy. You need me to be wealthy. Now take your sister and brother by the hand and tell them, get down to business. Tell them, get down to business. Let's pray. Father, I pray that your word has found good ground. That there be such a miraculous transformation here in this house. That everybody that's thirsty for the change, thirsty for a brand new day, will understand is predicated on our deliverance and holiness in the house of God. This house is the key to their success. How they obey. How they obey the nobleman of this house. How they obey the noble woman of this house. Father, it's this house that blesses their house. It's this house that's the key that unlocks their health, their wealth their deliverance master help them not to hang with negative thinkers negative talkers negative saints negative family members negative friends that negativity seeps down into their subconscious man and they take on a formation a part of the spirit that calls itself life and they become a mimic instead of a true disciple. They mimic clapping their hands, patting their feet, hollering amen and shouting. But they are subject to the vain religiosity of this system. It is a system that is religious but with no power. A system that acts like but it is a system of no power. Oh God, holiness without which no man shall see God. Father, I pray today that these people that are such a great people in the midst of such a great fast would humble themselves to you and say, me, Lord. Just as the great prophet Jeremiah says, we see that we have gotten off track. But you turn us. You return us and renew us of old. Put us back on track. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, rebuke the spirit of poverty. Rebuke his schemes. Rebuke his lies. Rebuke his seed. Rebuke his manifestation. Rebuke his speech. Rebuke his diabolical, demoniacal transfer. We rebuke his slander. We rebuke his teaching, his preaching, his prophetic. We rebuke his emulation, his manifestations. We rebuke his way, his song, his dance, his lie. We rebuke his slothfulness, his anger, his wrath. We rebuke his subtlety, his sakinery. We rebuke his hand, his work, his strength. We rebuke his purpose, his plans, his destinies. This house, is a house slated for victory. They shall accomplish. They shall be substantial. They shall increase more and more, more and more. They shall break out on all sides. They shall continue. They shall excel. They shall be successful in all that they put their hands to do. For this house shall be a house of deliverance. This house is a house of holiness. This house shall possess all of her possessions. We rebuke in a form, way, shape, thought, deed, seed, blade 
sprout of any inkling of the enemy. But where you have planted good ground and the seed that has fallen into good ground. Father, you told the disciples, the enemy knows that if you have not received it, he comes and taketh it away. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we hide the seed deep in good ground. You are good ground in us. We stand on holy ground. We sit among the congregation of the righteous. This is good ground. We tuck it, we hide it, we cover it over. And it shall produce a harvest. For we are committed and commissioned to occupy until you come. And what we don't know, we'll ask. And what we don't understand, we'll ask. And what we need to do, how do I, how do I, how, how do I invest? What do I start? What, we will ask. Because we will not be the forgetful of good things. Because we're dawning into a new day. Oh, Father. We are determined to live beyond this system. And every disciple that agrees with me in prayer, say amen.